Hi everyone and welcome to the sixth SEDB broadcast. Uh, we're lucky, very lucky today to have representatives of Central and Southern Mexican Leagues um, and an AMID rep to talk about Mexico's derby, especially in their region. Uh, so I'll let them all introduce themselves before we get started. Hi, uh, I'm Maria Marie from Aniquiladoras Roller Derby. Um, our team is like five years of history and since 2019 we've been an independent team uh, just playing with uh, at the big leagues so it's been a very cool history and thank you for inviting us hi i'm dirty boots and i play for fugas roller derby we were established in 20 like we have like four or three years and we are an independent team half of the team is from estado de mexico and the other part is from mexico city and thank you for having us here hi i'm part of mexico city roller derby uh, my name is maya Kerales. it's a mayan name uh, that's mean Venus, something like Venus, that this star, morning star. Mm -hmm. uh, my derby name is Barderita, that's mean annoying, so I'm an, an annoying person, so that's my <laughs> derby name. Uh, so we start as a league in 2016. Uh, we have three champs in uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, and in 2019, we earn the third place in uh, our national champs. Uh, well, we started in WFGDA in 2018 and we earned the full membership in 1920, no, hmm, 2019. <laughs> I, I'm smarter in, smarter in Spanish. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would be much worse in Spanish. So. <laughs> So uh, we are trying to rank in WFTDA, but we have uh, problems with uh, our incomes and um, that uh, WFTDA teams doesn't want to play if you are not ranking. So we, if we don't have rank, so it's really complicated for Mexican teams to play or to start ranking in WFTDA. So we are trying, uh, <laughs> or we have uh, scheduled two, two games this year, but coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we are working in our emotions uh, this, this time because it's really hard for us. We have to uh, write to around 50 teams to schedule these two plays, two, two games in, in this year. So it's complicated for us, but here <laughs> we're here well, i'm smarter in spanish really <laughs> thank you yes, cheers. <laughs> okay so i am lex i will be here as a representative of the um mexican association of roller derby uh, i am the vice president of roller derby i've been playing roller derby since 2011 i started as a player and as a referee and right now I am a coach for Mexico City Roller Derby, a WFTDA travel team and local national team. Uh, also, I'm a captain for my men's roller derby team, uh, Crows. And uh, I am part of the WFTDA also. Uh, so I am uh, part of the members of the um, certification of our site for new referees. Um, and we'll be here to answer your questions. Okay, uh, I am Deina. I am from Quimeras, Roller Derby, from uh, Mexico City's league, well, one of the, the leagues. Um, and we have been here around nine years or ten. Nine or ten? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure because I'm uh, a new member from this team since uh, two years ago, four years, four years. So I'm not quite sure, but it has been nine or ten years and what else oh that's it i'm at the middle <laughs> uh well we are uh, part of uh, a 
in MXRD. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not as good as you talking English, so please give me patience. But um, we are um, disorder, discordia. Uh, we are part of the league that MXRD. Uh, we have uh, 10 years of um, history in Roller Derby here, Mexico. Uh, we are here to learn and listen and talk. <laughs> we so are so like um, uh, chatting with, uh, with another people, sorry. So be patient, please. No, it's it's really good to have all of you here um, because as several of you hinted i think a lot of people don't realize just how long mexico has had roller derby um and mexican roller derby has been going for as long as pretty much most of the older leagues in europe for example and i think there's not not really that much awareness um of how long derby's been going um but another thing i want to ask to start off with is Several of you are leagues based in Mexico City. So can I just can we just check for the audience how many of you represent leagues that are based in Mexico City um, as a sort of municipal area? Because I think there's three Mexico City leagues, right? No, five. Five? Is that counting? Is that counting gender separately, or is that? Um... No, the, the, actually, the leagues have uh, men's and women's team in the same league, but okay. also. I think probably because you are missing the independent uh, leagues yeah. that they don't have like a whole name, but they have a team and it's representative. So that's why we are five in the center or in Mexico City. I think people perhaps don't realize this. I mean, I think that this sounds astonishing, I think, to, to for example, European listeners, because we, because we tend to have smaller cities. But I think people don't just also don't realize because Mexico City is very big. Right? It has a very large population. So this is like... You know, compared to a European city, is actually not that surprising that you can manage to sustain that many leagues. Um, but so, uh, as a result of that, uh, are there a lot of rivalries and long-standing kind of repeat games between the Mexican teams, or is it a, I mean, positive rivalries, right? Sporting rival, sporting rivalries. Yeah, I don't know who wants to answer that question. Uh... I, I was thinking maybe Dana or Alex can give us a review of uh, Mexican roller derby history because in Mexico, in all our country, we have many, plenty teams and mm. we have 10 years practicing. So in Mexico, we have this centralizing and we have like 10 teams, more or less. But in our country, we have uh, approximately 20 teams or uh, 15 leagues or something like that. But I think in this uh, chat, in this uh, blog, Dana and Alex uh, are the people who have more uh, knowledge about our history, Mexican sure. roller derby history. No, I, I think they yes. are the indicators. <laughs> well, um, take a seat, boys. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> um, well, it all starts, um, it starts in 2012, uh, well, uh, the first national championship of 2011, Alex, it was 2012. So the yeah. first leagues, the first leagues founded in Mexico was Discordia. So well, well, in that MXRD, uh, with other name, but MXRD was the league found, founder, one of the founders leagues. Also Monterrey. Uh, then Liga Royal Derby DF, uh, Querétaro, and Minerva. So those five leagues were the starter leagues in whole Mexico. That was 2010, two of them, and the other three in 2011. Uh, the yes. first interleague game was around March 2011 and was MXRD against Querétaro. That was the first time uh, there was a game between states. February, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, so, because you had in, in the Mexico City, you had two teams that they played against each other. But with the first time we already have a, a travel team was Carter against uh, MXRD. And then, because we said, ah, oh, yeah, we can travel, so let's start this thing. We already have five teams, make it a national or make it a tournament, a big tournament. And then Monterrey, uh, which was one of the founder uh, members of the idea of Hanover Derby in Mexico, because uh, the really 
close to the border and really close to Texas and all that. So they decided that, okay, let's get this started and everybody just round it up and started the first tournament in April 2012 in Monterrey. That was the first national uh, tournament that we have. Yeah, but, but uh, there, um, there uh, that first championship, it was, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to play with because I wasn't around in that time. But uh, people say that it was amazing. It was like huge, and it were it was food truck and a live band playing, and but it was amazing. And I, I see pictures, and it was like, yeah. But for example, the referees were like uh, without the proper gear, and uh, the players were so thin, and <laughs> it is. It was like hit floor, hit floor, uh, cut the yeah. track. Uh, it was a very floor. primitive game. <laughs> yeah, it was very cute. <laughs> I think it was cute. <laughs> the next one, well, it all it started from there. And since then, we have been uh, making, well, at this point, we have 20 teams at the Mexican Association. And we have a lot of teams, independent teams, that are on their own. For example, in Toluca, Toluca, well, uh, it's Mexico City. And then from there, Toluca, it's really close to Mexico City. It's like two hours away. And there yeah. are a lot of little teams, and that's okay. I don't know what they are doing, but they are up to. But then, for example, Monterrey, it's uh, 12 hours away from Mexico City. So our, uh, well, in my car, but, it's, uh, it's a little expensive to be traveling around a lot, for example, for playoffs and champions. And we have two champions because Mexico's roller derby is divided into, um, and also come as you, categories, yes. Category, yes. yeah. Okay. Female and male. Team. Yes. It's divided into, uh, it's like the, the A teams and the B teams. So it's playoffs for the first 12 uh, spots mm -hmm. in the ranking. And then from 13 to 20, it's, uh, they, they don't have playoffs, but they play uh, the championship division. So, so yeah, yeah, let me just pause you there, uh, just yeah. to give a little bit of background of why we do this and what is an independent team uh, away from the association and what is the association team. So. Uh, what we tried to do in 2013, I think, or 2012, I can remember, 13, I think, uh, it was homologate what WFTDA had in the structure at that time. So we decided to put this ranking system and to try to sign up the teams inside the association so we can have this structure of tournaments, this structure of ranking, and this structure of rulebook. And we tried to replicate almost exactly as it was in that time in WFTDA, that they have Division Two and not the Cups, that they have the playoffs in Division One, and that you need a uh, certain number of games to rank to go to playoffs, and you have to have certain time playing before you can be considered part of the association. So that is why not of all of the teams are inside the association because, as Dana mentioned, uh, there's a lot of money, cost, involvement, and other all of that kind of stuff. So that is why we took that uh, structure and said, okay, now we have ranking system. So now we can say the first 12 can go to playoffs and the other ones are division two. And then in playoffs, we do the brackets, elimination stuff and go to champs. Same thing tried to be done for the men's, but we are a lot of less teams in that. Yeah. So we have never had more than eight teams in the men's. So that's a background. And that's why when you say that oh, there's a team that is not part of the MRDA. Okay, it's part of the Royal Derby. We still uh, have a vision on that team. Yeah, but it is not part of that structure that help them rank or help them go to tournaments. So, and those teams can go to other tournaments not organized by the MRDA. So, it, let's say we have in in April that we have Copa de Fuego. A lot of teams can go there that they are not uh, part of the association because they are not ranked uh, or sanctioned games, so they can play against each other. So we still give support to those. You can continue, Tina. I forgot what I was saying. Ah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's divided in two. And this was because of everything that Lex just said. But also, we want to make the teams play more. Uh, 
it was, for example, the number one playing against number 19, it was going to be really hard and um, difficult game for the 19th yeah. place. So it's more fair and it's a uh, it, it, it gives you the chance as a new team or as a veteran team, let's say, to play against your own, your some, some team with your, your level. level let's yeah. say. So that's, that's been with the, with the team. And um, for example, this year, the coronavirus, but it was a, a first time for a lot of teams. For example, it was the first time that Anquiladoras was going to play. Uh, as champions because they got independent in 2018. Was it? 18? To the microphone, your microphone is off. 2019 was our yeah. first year. Yeah, but this was the first time they, they were going to play the champions, for example. So it's a little longer for all of us. Yeah. But my, my understanding is that the nationals are still going ahead this year. You just rescheduled them because the announcement was that you were pushing everything back to mostly November so um yeah so basically what we are doing the association the uh, board of the directors for the Mexican Association is replicating most of the things that can be replicated from WFTDA so so far WFTDA also has not canceled their champs they cancel their playoffs and the champs are staying on hold uh, they have a place to do them. They already know the city. So what we try to do here in the Mexican Association is, okay, let's replicate that, but we don't have a city right now. So once we set up the dates and say, okay, this is not being canceled, she's open. So you can describe your league and say, okay, probably I can host that tournament if everything goes according to whatever it is and uh, safety and national COVID announcements and everything, right? So that's why we said, or the statement is it's what it's trying to say, like, okay, everything is still in place because we don't know exactly where we're going to be, but we still don't have a host. So if you are going to be the host, please just ping us and let's see what happens. And at the end, obviously, as any other, other WFTD announcement is, everything can change according to the safety procedures and COVID announcements. So if tomorrow they say that they have a cure, cool. Everything goes according to the plan, and that's good. If by the end of the month they say that they don't, okay, then we have to analyze it again and say what is the next step. But right now, that's that's the plan of the association. Like, okay, we are replicating. We are still on hold, we know. But in the case that everything goes according to plan, then probably we can do it. And also, there's still the feasibility of economic uh, impact and that stuff. So that is also have to be checked before mm -hmm. having a host and uh complain everything to have the tournament but yes we have not cancelled that yet so i think it's quite i mean it's quite positive that there is the possibility that we can still have uh continue the unbroken chain of um of national tournaments um but obviously as you mentioned there's lots of other tournaments um in mexico um and i want to because it is a full-length game start showing our footage we have for this for this podcast so this is from, and I should say, uh, I'm very, very glad that in Mexico you also have Derby Wife, who do a sterling job um, videoing and broadcasting all of um, a huge number of games in Mexico, uh, especially the tournaments. So we have some footage that Derby Wife have allowed us to uh, use from the Luna Cup, which was earlier this year, one of the one of the later tournaments that happened before everything went to pot. Um, uh, and this is going to be Mexico City. Yeah. This is going to be Mexico City Discordias. So um, I will share it and then we'll. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you'll see the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I will want this talking. So. There's no audio because we want to talk, but um, okay. there was there was some very, there was some commentating on this as well. But um, this was, um, I think, one of the middle games in Luna Cup, um, one of the towards the end of the Luna Cup, and I picked it because I think there's a long-standing. I mean, MCID Discordia is, I think, a game that happens a lot, and uh, so it felt emblematic of um, of Mexican derby in, a, in some sense, at least for these teams. Uh, so, when are you playing in this game? Magic and what we uh, Mariana. Yes, I, was, yeah. yes. I have the number 
for four on blue. <laughs> blue for four. And, and, yeah. and I am a seven night of red. <laughs> but I'm a jammer and I'm, I'm not on the truck yet. And you can see that I'm crying because uh, it's really sad for, I think, all of us. Yeah. Uh, don't have the opportunity to play and skate. And yeah. all this day that I have to wear or I use my uniform, I cry, <laughs> like right now. <laughs> oh my God. I don't, know. I don't know you guys, but I have been found this really frustrating. But I'm perfectly okay at my house. I can work from my house and I'm oh, pretty I'm glad with my, with my cat and, and, and so on. But the fact that I cannot go to play and to train and to be with my with my pack, it's really annoying. That's the, the, the part that really frustrates me the most. That I cannot skate and I can it's not the same to be a nice skate at my house because it, it's just not the same and I, I need that rush and to, to be all sweaty and hitting my friends. It's really disappointing for me. <clears throat> and that pretty smell from our gear, I really miss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the smell of roller derby. I'm really according with you, Dana. Um, I think that we are all in the same situation. Every everybody seems different scenarios uh, about work or whatever. Somebody have better situations than another, but this is what we are living now. But I think that in derby we are sharing the same feelings. Actually, after that, <laughs> that, um, that tournament, it was like, <laughs> we're like, well, we as Anigladoras are kind of frustrated because we were like, okay, what's next? And then it's coming this and we're not uh, the trainings and we are not, we are, think, we are like losing time and all, I mean, in our team, not all the girls are, are okay with this situation about the COVID. Some, we have some very, very nervous people and everybody is taking this situation like everybody can too. So it, even that is very different because we can be like, like okay, we are, we are good and we're like skating in our home. We can because I mean, everybody is taking this situation different according to his to the situation in home or emotionally or financially or and it's very different. It's it's very hard to and and to to read those updates about a a m r d about the playoffs and about the champs. It's like I just wanna cry because. It's been it's been very difficult. And also, I, I have been trying to uh, work out at my place because I'm gonna go back to the track really chubby, really. I mean, really. everybody. Look at these chicks. Look at these chicks. <laughs> but it's really frustrating for me. And also, all the plans. For example, the team Mexico. We were really working on it, and, yeah. and we were really excited True. about going to. To the working their ass off, and yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, well, they were working really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very kind yeah. of hard. It's heartbroken, yeah, because they were really excited and they were like, Yeah, this is the year we, we, we have been working <laughs> a lot more and we have been getting together, and they were ha having trouble with the money because travel from the old Mexican space to one to train and we have players that are from USA and well they, they are Mexican but they are living in the USA and to travel and all the expenses and they were like really really sad and frustrated because it's like it's not fair this was our year it's not <laughs> fair <laughs> And yeah, yeah, I agree because I think this time the men's uh, Mexico uh, team, I think they could go for a medal this year or maybe uh, yeah. fourth place for sure. I mean, we, we lost 
for 20 points against Canada in the quarterfinals. Oh, you, were, so, you were really, you were really strong last time. I mean, yeah, yeah. and this you time were, the, the you were award, hit more by you were hit more by the fact that your seeding didn't reflect yeah. what your actual ability was, and that meant you couldn't be placed yeah, where agree. you might have been. So, and, and this time uh, everybody was working really hard, their bodies, their minds, their yeah. rules, actually, the coaching, everything was really structured this time, or at least more structured than last time. So for us, I think all Mexico was like, oh, this year we can have a fourth or third place for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We are, it sounds uh, like a, a little tragic, but uh, we have to see the brighter side. So we, yes, we have a pause, we have a this stop, uh, we have a, um, just emotions, bad emotions and frustra frustration and everything. But we have to see the, 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 the positive, right? Because we, can, we can't um, just focus on the bad sides. Uh, that's, it's yeah, a we situation. Can. We can, we can um, do anything because we can't, really we can't, uh, the only thing we can do is um, uh, work about uh, our mind, the body, and everything about we need to do to take care about about us and then we can um return to our lives it was uh, it could be difficult the the return uh, i think it could be very difficult but i think that if we try to work uh in this time in our body our minds our spirits i I and I think uh, we can do. Um, we 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 all we can uh, reach our goals, and we we are going to do. I I think <laughs> we, every everyone have to to reach our goals. So don't just don't focus only on the bad things. I mm. I think we have to do the, uh, the right things too. I think it, yeah. you know, it's also important, Mariana, to listen to these uh, psychological effects of this pause of this quarantine, because yes. I think many teams are working on this uh, support, uh, are trying to train in, at their homes, homes, are trying to keep uh, focus on the positive things, but the quarantine, uh, this uh, change in our lives, Yes. Has ha, has an impact in our psychosis. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. no, yeah. uh, and and I'm, I think I'm it's agree. important. I really hear. agree. I I saw the people I love and also me uh, um, trying to not break down about this or to not uh, crying every day or to not. Um, uh, I don't know. It's it's difficult. Not I know, getting but, crazy is it's yes, difficult. Yes, yes, I know. But it, I, I think it, if we only see that, we can't only we can see the other side. Yes, yes, we have to be conscious, conscious about what is happening, about the bad things, about uh, what is the was uh, this is um, even have uh, an impact of our lives, but. Um, also how it's going to change and that's why i think the work on this time it's very important not only physical yes we have a, a, a the mind it's more important i think so and i think yes, that's the, the sorry mariana i think that's the most difficult part of this quarantine and this uh encerramiento <laughs> lockdown <laughs> i think that work the mind positively is the hardest part of these days everybody has different um feelings and emotions and our our attitudes in i mean i'm not depressed i'm talking about me i'm not depressed i'm not sad but sometimes I really don't want to do anything. And sometimes I just wanted to be in bed. And some, I mean, I'm still working. That's a very good news. And I'm working from home and I don't have to go out and to risk myself. I mean, I'm okay. But 
sometimes it's like I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk with anybody. I don't even want to know something about roller derby. It's different situations. And then the next day I'm, ah, okay, I'm fine. Let's work. And it's like a roller coaster. Roller coaster. <laughs> and it's about everything. Okay. And we, I think we have all this family or near people that are in extreme situations yeah. that are depressing or the very, like, I don't believe in this COVID thing. Uh, and it's like, uh, I don't know what, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult and it's, it's important to accept that to live these days, it just depends on you, on what, how do you want to live these days? Nobody, uh, it's for me really like, okay, come on, let's get everybody good. It's like, gracias por tus consejos. Me hubiera dicho, ya estoy bien, ¿no? It's something like that. Like, oh yeah, let's get, be really positive. But it's really hard to be everybody in that like calm yes. in a positive way. I know it really is to say it, but it depends of a lot of the situation of, of everybody. I mean, I'm really yes. like you, Marina, let's be positive, but just to say this, the scenario that it's coming, not that, it, that we're living, that it's coming like another Two months or one month and a half of this quarantine is like oh, it looks mm. so far to be this oh. and um, all the situation about works of my people I mean family friends and to know different situations is something sometimes is like worrying mm. and and then obviously we all thinking in roller derby and because that's our escape and, yeah. and and when we are we we when we don't have that part of our escape it's like really really frustrating because we even don't have that and we are just seeing it very very far and it's like we are we have nothing these days and it's difficult yeah I was but thinking, yeah, like, I, I'm a really lucky person. I, until, the, until now, I have no, any injuries in roller derby. So this quarantine put us all, everything, every team, every people in roller derby, like if we were injured because we can oh play. God, we yes. can play. Yes. So Matt, if you have any injuries in your roller derby life, you know this frustration that we are feeling right now you can go you can train you 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 want to be on the track you want to be with your team but you're uh, i don't know <laughs> you're injured your injury don't allow that so right now this quarantine put everybody <laughs> under an injury you know well, well know actually we, we have to look as uh, Mariana mentioned the bright side because okay yeah. I cannot uh, train and yes I'm injured but at least I can train from home or yeah. that's yes. like the bright part of yes. I am not real injured but yes I can see that feeling that oh I cannot play but at least I can train pr probably physical stuff at least yeah. yes. I, I think that. that the quarantine helped us to uh, have a little change of mentality and that that change apply for us our sport is going to be really Huge. positive when all this ends so there is an yeah it's a roller coaster everything that we are feeling and it's yeah i think we lost you your streaming a signal it's okay um <laughs> Seems like she's singing. <laughs> yes. This is a very, this is a very happy, a very happy distorted audio. <laughs> Robot in singing. Frida, no te podemos escuchar. We all the things have planned. Hello. Oh ya yeah, ya yeah, volviste. No te podemos escuchar. Oh uh, sorry. Perdón. Let's try again. Uh, <laughs> 
Bueno, um, la, última, la última que yo me quedé fue que decías que esta es una gran oportunidad para y ahí te trabas. Uh, it's a really uh, big opportunity to... No. no. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> Frida, no te preocupes. <laughs> ¿Tienes el suspenso? I'm going to... Yes, I'm going to... Yes, I'm going ¿Ya se oye o no? Pero te traes justo cuando vas a empezar a decir. Y el secret es. Bueno, bueno. Ok, I don't know what's happening with my wifi. It's okay, it's okay. It's fine. Uh, well, I hope this uh, ends soon. And we can. Uh, All the plans that all the teams have for this year and this season, uh, we can make it in the future. We hope soon, mm -hmm. but I think that this time it, it will help, help us to have a change with our teams, with the mentality and see uh, other forms to share or give something to this sport. Yes, uh, I think it will. Um, yeah. But speaking of plans, what plans did we have? So what plans were there for, because um, obviously a lot of derby happens in Mexico. So what actually was planned uh, before this happened? Well, in my team, in Fugas, we are, we have the plan to make the first roller derby convention in Mexico. It was take place the la no, the next week but we have to stop it since two months ago. We invite uh, Costa Rica, but they cancel the, the flight. So maybe we, ne the next year, we are going to do it. So was the idea for this to be international, international? Were you trying to get teams from North America as well, from, you know, from the USA as well, or was it Yeah, we're going to invite some other players. We are talking with another leagues. And obviously it was for Mexico, but everybody is welcome. So, well, we're going to make it next year. Because I think it'll be, it'll be, it's good to have excuses to get people to come to Mexico. Because I understand that one of the problems you have is, and this is a problem that, We had to have in Scotland. We have in the smaller scale in Scotland. We have the problem persuading people to come up from England to the mm. northern parts of Scotland because it's also far away. Um, but I think it's also a problem for Mexico, right? Getting teams outside of Mexico to come. Yeah, and actually, there's there's a I think a bigger problem there. Uh, I know the problem is there's nothing here for them, I guess, unless they want to like go to charity or help us uh, build something else. But like for a competitive system in that kind of scenario, I think that's why they uh, kind of uh, think about it, like coming down and see, okay, what, what do I get from here? Or what do I get from this? So that's the main problem we have right now. Like uh, bigger teams don't, they will never come back on, Uh, down here and the medium to small teams or uh, less ranked teams uh, probably they don't have the um, the money or the plans to also come here and not only that even though uh, we cannot host that uh, kind of international games we already did it once uh, it was actually really cool uh, but the problem is if we want to go WFTDA Uh, we need refs, we need to comply with the safety management system, we need to comply with the ranking system of uh, having a rank game. So we need a track with the space, with the safety measures, we need at least uh, certified refs, we need NSOs. So we need that of a big of a structure that we don't have yet because the same players are refs. So if we want to play, Uh, okay, we are losing half of our officials already mm -hmm. if we were going to play. So also, we are going to invite someone from the from abroad and we have to invite someone from inside Mexico, from other leagues, to help us organize as referees, as staff, officials, everything. So I think that's a, a local issue, but then we have this other issue that you mentioned. Uh, nobody wants to come here because what do they get? Mm. Yeah. 
I think it's a trap uh, with the ranking, and then I'm pretty sure that it's not the first time that uh, some team speak talk about this mm -hmm. because uh, when when you have this goal of competition and start to ranking the fun that you can have yeah. uh, playing with any team in any place in any circumstance circumstances is not the goal so you are looking you are fighting for this rank and you stop to see and help this team to want to improve their skills, who, who want to travel, because it's not useful for your ranking. So mm -hmm. I think that is complicated and I don't know, it's painful <laughs> at some point, but it's, it's sad because also in Mexico that happened because we have home teams. I, I, I'm thinking in Tequileras, in Cuatlicues, in Cholas. We have home teams, but we forgot that Things because we are fighting for rank and champs and, and uh, competition. We, we want to win and we want to be champs, no? So it's this, uh, I don't know, complicated situation. Of, yeah. No. So yeah, I guess that, that's a matter of the main points because most of the WFTD teams or travel teams, they are focused on winning. So if I say, come here and play with me, it's like, okay, what do I get? Uh, more points from my ranking? Do I get a medal? Do I, what do I get? that I cannot get here in my uh, city or in my uh, country. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the main issues there. Because uh, if we go and say, okay, I want to play with you, and they say, okay, right, come here. You can play with us. Uh, we can have a, a not sanction games, or not ranking games, so only regulation games, or a friendly match. And they are all set up. They will put everything, even they can give you a, li a little money just for your officials or whatever. But it, as soon as you mention, oh, this is going to be a rank, uh, or a mm. sanction game is like, oh, okay, let's think about it. So mm. I think that's a real issue because uh, everybody is thinking in their points, in their numbers, and nobody wants to lose them. So yeah. if they want to play against a team that is a lower ranking, they're always going to say no because they don't know that match is going to affect us, affect them or not. So that is a big issue there. Yeah, and I, I also, like... I'm sorry. As Go I ahead. said, that also, I mean, that, that, that has happened in Europe as well. Um, in the, We've seen games occasionally that were planned to happen, mysteriously cancelled, uh, when one team or the other noticed their ranking had changed sufficiently that it wasn't a good game anymore. Um, but I think it's less impactful in Europe because travel costs tend to be less anyway, so you're not investing as much. Into, I mean, it's still, it's still horrible to have it happen, but you're losing less resource less money from it happening um so i don't know that's that was my my next point because uh we have this geopolitical uh, this position in the earth that our neighbor is united states mm -hmm. and we have many plenty of teams that we can't play against but mm -hmm. we need visa so many of our skaters uh, have this uh, obstacle because United States uh, consider that we want to live in United States be because mm. they think that we want to move to their country. So I mean, we do. We do. That's not this time. Joking. We just want to yeah. skate. Uh, exactly. Yeah. We just want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to, uh, right now, in, in 2020, we have to change our plan to Europe because in the United States we can't play because only half of our team have visa. So mm -hmm. we can compete with eight, eight skaters. Mm -hmm. in, in WFTDA for ranking, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and also, I, I'm sorry, sorry, Mario. And also, it's really hard uh, um, to many of us to get the, the papers it's like why are you going uh, do you have some something in mexico that you have to come back no i don't well then you cannot come in my country so it's really hard it's really expensive and if you get a no you have to pay again so it's really expensive and it's really hard and it's like you know what guys it's easier for you to, to come down here i mean it's cheaper for you it's easier and let's be real, you don't want to live in Mexico, so you will have <laughs> to go back to your country. But they don't see the point, like Lex was saying, 
the, the point you played against us. And it's like, dude, just for the fun. It's like, mm. I know it's going to be expensive, but I mean, like, you getting vulnerable to be the number one always, not just to play with your friends, because it's one less game. It's not another game, because you're not getting any younger. I mean, you should want to play as much as you can. So when you will be old, you will say, I play against a Mexican team. It was amazing. And the girls were real nice. And I don't know, like, just make memories because yeah. it's not all about winning. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm really uh, a happy person. So <laughs> maybe yeah, it's okay. I'm in the wrong approach. I'm completing the point of Dana is, I think WFTA needs to do something about that because how do you want to empower the sports in other countries if you are not giving any anything in return for your teams? So if you want to go and be have a really strong presence in South America, in Mexico, in other parts of Europe that you are not reaching, okay, WFTA has to offer something to some team or teams that are nearby, like, okay, please go and help them to be a WFTDA team, go and help them strength factor, go and help them ranked. And once they are ranked, then that's your job. Your job, your job is done. Then you can leave them, then they can uh, look for games on their own. But first, uh, let's go walk them all the way through until they are ranked. From there, they can do whatever they want. But right now, that's the main issue. WFTDA, yeah, it says, yes, we are going to help everybody. We want to have presence in all the world. Yes. But the presence is not the only thing you need. You need support. And right now, WFTDA is not supporting small leagues. Yes, they changed last year uh, the amount of money you are paying if you are rank A, B, or C, or D even. So you pay less because you are not uh, a strong you know, team. But right now, there's nothing else. So WFTDA is offering anything for other teams to come down to Mexico, to South America. We can see uh, last year, uh, Dos Pro Cuatro, what they have to suffer to go mm -hmm. to Europe. And they play in Europe in uh, the cup against their own team in Argentina. They could have, could have played that game over there. Like, why go all the That's way uh, across seas? Yeah, exactly. Like, WFTD, come on, give me something else. Give me something new or something that is worth it. So I yeah. think that's the missing point or the missing part in WFTDA. And I think a lot of this is sort of semi-invisible because as you say, I mean, uh, I think a lot of people in the wider Derby world, I mean, to a certain extent, and I, I mean, this is a sad thing, to a certain extent, teams outside of North, uh, outside of D1 are sort of invisible in a sense to, to the average person who plays Derby worldwide. So people didn't really notice at the top of their consciousness this was even a problem until say the city and dos Pocotto managed to actually get into into d1 d2 uh, playoff type of situations that people actually noticed them and as you say i mean it's it's been a problem for mexico for as long it's been a problem for all of the latin american leagues for as long uh, so yeah and i think also wftda should help and other countries to make, for example, an association. I, I didn't realize that Mexico was a little of the few countries that have an association until I met uh, Argentinian people and they were like, you have an association? Yes, we do. What? Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, no, no. You don't have an association? How does it work? <laughs> and, and it was really mind blowing for me because mm -hmm. I thought every country has an, had an association because WFTBA taught you how to do it until mm. I realized that, in, for example, in Mexico, there was like Miguel Valerito, who, um, um, former president, and they started like, you know what, we should make an association to get this easier. Yeah, okay, all right. And they did it, but they didn't have any uh, help from WFTBA. And I think that, and it's really cute, that's the word, cute what WFTDA wants to do with the, oh yes, let's be friends and have teams all over the world, but it's not my problem how you do it. I just want you to have role there. And it's like, come on, give me a break, help me. How do, should I start this? How do we work on this? Because for example, in Mexico, it was um, five, six years of work to get this like uh, the ranking in and not just uh you won you won all your games so you are the the total winner and it's like no 
we have numbers and now we have an algorithm to make the the calculations and, and all stuff like that and it's more fair but it took us six years to get there so if WFPDH would have uh, come and and explain or make a guide it would be a lot easier and maybe we should be in a better place uh, right now I mean it's not it's not like we are bad we are in Mexico we are making a lot of work and it's really I, I really love what had been uh, happening in Mexico in our association but it would be a lot easier and we could have saved a lot of steps and a lot of mistakes that were made so if WFTDA would have helped us and I think that's a little um, a problem that they have because uh, they're not helping and for example Argentina, Costa Rica, Colombia they're not helping as much as they could you know yeah, but I th and I mean, I think you're right, but I mean, I think it's also interesting to note that um, looking at my list of teams that of countries that had cups, uh, actually, uh, Colombia did also extremely well in early in having a series of tournaments, um, which again, I don't think people are very well aware of either, because obviously they aren't in Europe or North America. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, uh, yes, I think WFTDA has until recently tended to think of itself as an organization for teams, not an organization for nations. And so I think, as you say, they were very relaxed about, well, we'll let the teams organize themselves in a nation however they want to, right? Because they'll, they'll, they'll do whatever they're doing. Um, and certainly, I mean, so certainly for the UK, as an example, uh, we have always had more members of our national our national governing, governing body than have been members of WFTDA uh, because they would join ours first but where unusual there are as you say there isn't even a national governing body in Argentina uh, even though they've had derby for a long time as well and so uh, yeah. so but I think it's I think it's a credit to Mexico that you did organize as rapidly as you did because you organized faster than most of the most of the other countries have, have had Derby. Um, I mean, was there anything that drove that or do you think it was just luck that you decided to organize the way you did? No, I think it was a really, um, Valerito and Miguel, they were the first uh, presidents of the association. They, they started, uh, they were, they are Derby Abbey, like big time. And so they want to do better and I think that it was a very, uh, a very noble act to say, let's start this. Let's just make a, at, at the beginning it was just a, com, a comit, committee. I don't know how to say committee. Mayo, Mayo, como digo committee? Committee. You just say committee. committee. Yes, it's committee. Uh, committee. Yeah. They started a committee and it was five first uh, people from Querétaro, Monterrey, Guadalajara, eh, Las Dos Ligas, uh, two delegates from Mexico City back then. And they just started. And because Miguel lived in Monterrey, he was very close to the WFTDA and the teams from there. So he got the idea from there and he started asking and so. And Valerito, it's really, uh, she's a, uh, She's a weirdo. I love her so much. But she started asking and like, let's let's do this. And they started. And uh, but it was just both of them, actually. And then we this started to begin to, to grow. Right? And it got bigger and bigger and better and better. And then we got Lex that he's uh he knows I really um, a lot about WFTDA and NRDA, and he also is a derby addict. He likes rules, he likes to ask, and he started to uh, to help us to get to get uh, the association that we have these days. And also, we have this uh, Ross. You don't know him. He's, uh, he's really shy, but he's the mastermind in the association. He makes all the numbers. He is in contact with MRDA. And actually, I think 
I think that the most important piece from the association, it's not the president, it's not the vice president, it's not the head rep, it's Jobs. So he makes a number and he is really patient and he has everything, everything at the MRDA. So the association, for example, the people that are in the association right now, it's like, I cannot imagine another people, another person other than the ones that are in it now, because all of them love roller derby very much, but like in a, in a sick way, like they want to be everything perfect and better. And it's not a selfish word. I, I really think that the association these days it's the best that it can, it can get. So it's a, a work from, from everybody. I mean, it's the association, the teams, because they are always like asking and um, they uh, follow the rules. Because if the team says, you know what, I don't think so, association, it's not happening. So it's a work from a lot of people. And um, yeah, I think I'm about to cry. So. <laughs> and I would like to agree that every year, uh, all the teams, uh, there is a, a growth in the level of the play and of the knowledge of the play. In, at this year, it's not just skating. We are immersed in all the sport, all the living all the feelings and all the rules and all the style of the derby. It's like we really know what we are doing. And this, this wasn't happening like seven years ago or when this started. So every year you can see the level of the games, of the tournaments and all the, and the level of the skating of every team. You can see the grooming year by year by year. Every year is harder to be to be the best. Mm -hmm. Every everybody here can can accept that, and that's that's that uh, is like a motivation to do it better than the other team. And then you have bigger um, expectations and bigger goals and bigger bigger um, dreams, I would say. So that's why we have here in Mexico two WFTDA teams, and we have like the, um, the, the men team roller derby and the, um, and the girls roller derby teams. And he, I think we are taking very seriously this thing about roller derby, even we are not getting zero pesos or zero money and we are doing it by our resources and however everybody can do it but it's a very satisfaction to be in here yeah and let me add that important point there because uh, a lot of teams a lot of referees a lot of people have asked me in us and the travels uh, how do we support the sport in Mexico? And it's like, uh, we do it by our pockets. And they say, oh, uh, how much ticket do you sell? How much beer do you sell by bout, by tournament? Like, uh, we don't sell any. Like, we don't have that kind of uh, support by our fans. Like, oh, really? How, how do you do it then? Like, we don't know. It's just we, we spend a lot of money in there. Because the USA or even, I think, Europe is really... Um, I used to sell tickets to have something uh, in return from selling beers and merchandise in there and expensive merchandise actually. So we don't do that. So if we want to play a tournament, we have to pay for the venue, we have to pay for the paramedics, and we don't sell tickets. So, so just so you know, the, and I want to make this statement clear for, for everybody in the world to see Mexican Derby is we don't have a business in Mexican Derby. We don't, period. So we and spend all our money and we don't get anything in return uh, compared with the big old tournament that has a thousand of dollars in return or the champs or WFTDA playoffs. All those have thousands of dollars returns only selling tickets and then a lot of more money selling beer or selling uh, alcoholic beverage inside the venue. We don't do that. We don't have yeah. a source to do that. We can because most of our venues are from the government 
and we cannot sell, uh, for example, beer or drugs. I'm just kidding. We can sell beer. Or we can sell anything. So, I mean, it's for it's free, and even and it's for us. And it's really for us. Yeah. 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 I mean, and we're our own fans and our That's family true. and yeah. our yeah. friends. It's for us. It's so I am brother that we love. If, yeah, if you go to a playoffs, it's like, oh my God, the venue's full. Oh yeah, because we are 20 teams and all the people <laughs> yes, in the stands yes. are the same team. It's so like, yeah, it's full it's, because of us. <laughs> it's like for us, by us. It's something yeah. Like and it's really stinky. <laughs> yeah, because like, it's, it's a small yeah. economic bubble because we make merchandise. Yeah. We buy the merchandise from the other team so they can buy <laughs> yes. the merchandise from us. And then we have to sell uh, whatever yeah. thing so the other team can buy. So it's a small economic bubble inside the Mexican Royal Derby, and that's it. Even, even the national camps, it's like a party <laughs> Muy for like, uh, We have to see all our friends of our states, of yeah, all, exactly. all states. It's like so it's party. like a party for us, yes. It's a big meeting. It's, it's, it's not funny, it's, it's tough, but it's also, uh, we, we have to, to think, and be together. Yes, so I think it's, it's getting a lot of, um, attention now that we have derby white but it's real as well it's working real as well mm -hmm. and also derby white it's free because if they charge yes. no one will see it so mm -hmm. it's yeah. a really hard work and it's uh i think it's getting not as strong as we would like but it's not as uh it's not like it used to be so i think it's it's a it's trying to get better yeah, we're evolving, baby steps, yeah. but we're evolving. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so With have you noticed? We're doing it very great. Yeah. I mean, so have have you noticed a change in perception of Derby from people over the last as as things have happened? I mean, because the classic thing is that in certain you know, talk to Europeans, it starts out with people being horrified because it's people on skates hitting each other, and then <laughs> it takes time to build up people knowing about it and feeling comfortable. Has that happened in Mexico? Have you had a change in perception or is it the same kind of thing? Yes, I, I think we have from these people hitting in skates to, oh, this is a sport. This is an actual sport. This is an organized sport. So people like start noticing. And the governments, as Dave was mentioned, as Marie was mentioned, is, okay, they also start paying attention in us because now they see us as a sport. So Mexico government, everybody wants to support uh, sports to avoid uh, people getting from drugs and everything, right? So now they look at us and say, okay, you're a sport, so okay, I come and give you one hour of my venue so you can train. So that's how we notice the, uh, this evolution in Derby. Uh, government bodies looking at us to support a sport. Not I a, think, Alex, that the government is looking at us because we are a feminist uh, sport. Because yeah. right now the go Mexican government have this really big issue with gender uh, problems in Mexico. So they have to improve to push <laughs> all gender uh, factors in, poli in poli poli uh, po uh, ah, policy. Political factors, yeah. Yeah. Policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. So we I have think to take advantage of that a lot now that we are in the so spotlight. So three yeah. of the teams are right now connected: um, uh, Discordias, Mexico City, and uh, ay, excuse me, Aniquiladoras. We have this uh, really good place with uh, the uh, Cuauhtémoc State, the uh, Delegación Cuauhtémoc, because they are pushing gender uh, factor in yeah. uh, poli. Uh, po policy, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. in the policy, yeah, but uh, I don't think that is, this is the same in Guadalajara, in Monterrey, in Baja California, so yes, we are um, gaining some spaces. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. we are pushing gaining. and we are gaining, yeah. but uh, yeah. I don't think that right now if we are uh, knocking on the, the sport uh, committee, national sport committee in Mexico, they are, they are interested in pushing us because yeah. we are this weird sport on skates that they don't understand. And in Mexico, I think that uh, we don't have this increasing public. Yeah, and that's the main I, thing they don't, they don't want to learn because they don't see it as a, a revenue. They don't see a revenue coming back for them. So it's like, okay, I, you don't give me money, so I don't pay you attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, oh, the, the cute girls in the skates are hitting each other. 
how cute but that's it that's it mm -hmm. and for example we even have a uh, um, in my league we have chimeras tequileras burdel zombie and oh my gosh, and minotauros and uh, we have a problem because we have a men's team and it's like i i support you but only the the girls team. and it's like no it's the whole package they are with us uh no it's it's really hard because i want the venue to play the girls with the volleyball and we are not going to give up on our guys our boys i mean i i understand the gender uh, situation in our country but it's like um this is a, a sport i mean what we're not going to give up on our boys so we have been struggling with that because we have our men's team and we are not willing to give up on them. We are not. So is that a common problem? That there's, I mean, so, I mean, you've mentioned it, but does anyone else, do we have other reps for the, from leagues that have men's teams that want to comment? Yeah, we have Mariana and I have myself, yeah, so. But so is this yeah, something you recognize? Mariana? The, the, the ¿Tienen use? problemas ustedes con tener un equipo de hombres? No, no, problemas no, 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 um, it's so supporting the 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 league, the entire league, because well, uh, disorder it's a great team, so they 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 saw the results, so they they love the they, they results. They are the champs. They are champions. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So so that's a, a an advantage, I think, but it's. Um, but in some, in other uh, instances, no se cómo se dice instancias, sorry. Scenarios, uh, yes, in other instances, uh, we, we, yes, we have the this even uh, some years uh, before we have an issue e, an an inter issue uh, with some people that want to divide the this that want to the 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 men's team uh, they have nothing to do with uh, with the the feminine the feminine team. team so so yes we have an issue uh, in, in that uh, case but not in every scenarios like you say so yeah. uh, yes yes it's an issue uh, we don't like uh, you you say they, we we don't give up on disorder and the uh, and the league, specifically on the league. Yeah, I think so. it's, but in Mexico in general, it's a real issue, as I was mentioned, uh, they don't they don't see us as a business. So they see us as a business, at least, or as you mentioned, Dana, like, oh yeah, there are girls skating and they look cute, okay. But when you see at the boys, like, ah, I prefer football or I prefer soccer, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, yes. okay. So yes, that's why actually in Mexico, we only have six teams, men's roller derby, um, because they, there is no, uh, advantage of having a men's team uh, overall uh, because of this where everything is happening right yeah. now so it's like mm, I, I don't see it as uh, it is complicated actually to have a men's team uh, because we have a lot of uh, struggle against other sports and other other uh, goals they have in mind right so there's yeah. uh, biking there's soccer there's football there's basketball there's a lot of other uh, sports that they prefer because they were raised by those sports so it's a it's really hard to convince someone to put skate on and be in a track but you know what's the funny part and this is always something that's bothering me in a good way because um there was this year i think it was 2018 uh, the national in national Morelos, it was 18. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. In 2018, we got a lot of uh, referees from the United States, and they were impressed by our um, men's roller derby. And even though Ninja, Ninja told me like, why don't you go play to MRDA? And I was like, I don't know, they don't want to, I guess. 
But she was like, it's amazing, your men's roller derby. And I was like, thank you, but did, did you see the girls? And she was like, yeah, the, girls, the girls are okay. And if they go to play to the USA, they, they are not going to get uh, some good results. Top, top 50, yeah. yeah. But the boys, I mean, they can... They can I go mean, to champs for I'm sure. I'm not kidding. Yeah, she said, I'm not kidding. They can, they can win. I mean, yeah, Minotauros really. are uh, disordered. They can be in top eight team of Merda for sure. But yeah, again, but we we go back to the what do they get? Okay, I, I pay money. I have all this. I need travel papers, so it's not worth it. So I'm not gonna even apply for Merda, even though I have the level. Yeah, that's the, the thing with the men's roller derby, and it, and I hate them because they they train like two times and champions. <laughs> like that fast. It's really fast. They're really good and it's really disappointing to see how uh, a lot of our teams are fading away. Uh, this year we only have, I, I'm not sure if we have five. Yeah, we only have teams. five this year. Five teams. And, and probably four well, actually because, but yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, it's really sad to hear that and also I, I, I don't know how can we uh, support them, how can we go with a new fresh fresh meat because most of them really got into roller derby because they, it's a girl that they like, it's uh, their girlfriend, uh, their wife, I mean most of them are a couple so I don't know how to, to call new people or how to support the teams that are already uh, create like uh, berserkers from veracruz it's uh, in, at the south mexico they are they fade away because they're they are not enough uh we have uh wheels of mayhem for example they are in the north and they play mrda and it's the only team that we have that play mrda yeah because it's, they are really close to the border and they have easier, papers yeah, yeah it's easier for them to go to usa than to came down to yeah. the rest of the country and I think the same thing happened for the uh, for the women's teams on the border as well. Because I know that Baja yeah. played a lot of games. Yeah, that is correct because that that's how they get to run because they have uh, San Diego, Soca, they have all this strip in the West Coast that they can play and they are friends because even they share uh, players when play in Mexico, when they play in the US. So they have this really good relationship and that's how they got the uh, ranked in the WFTA because they have someone like, okay, I can support you. I, I don't lose anything. Yeah, and you're here uh, 30 minutes away from me. So let's play. Yeah. Uh, so if we go down South, then we have this issue because we don't have papers, we need to travel. We don't have anyone to come, want to come down here. So yeah, that's yeah. actually. Well, and, and also, yeah, I mean, to the South, the Southern border of Mexico, unfortunately, there's not border any other nation that has Derby and the closest is Costa Rica which is quite a way away. And then you're looking yeah. into like Peru and Colombia, which are a lot further away. Yeah. We'll forget okay, how people other, forget how long, yeah. Yeah, the other WFTDA team that we have in Mexico, that it's Mexico City, uh, the rest of the, well, I don't know if there are other teams, but for example, in Quimeras, when they sell uh, T-shirts, uh, uh, pens, uh, everything that they sell, we buy it. So it's our way to support them to support that them. they can go and travel. They have a party, we're going. They have uh, shots for 50 pesos, I'm buying it. I mean, it's like, it's the way that we can support uh them. Yeah, but let me tell you, Sam, because we do have two WFTDA teams in Mexico, but they are a mesh. They're like a Frankenstein between the other teams in Mexico. So Baja has uh, people from Quimeras, uh, Mexico City has people, Cladoras, yeah. Mexico City has from Discordias, from Rock City, Querétaro. So yes, like, okay, let's build this kind of super team to go uh, compete against US. And also because I know you have visa, you have paper, so that's the only way we can do it. And as Dana was mentioned, there are players playing from one team in AM, uh, Mexico, but they play from other team, for other team in WFTD. So it's like, okay, we let's support each other to make this dream come true. Yeah. So it's so, pretty hard for us to play outside. Yeah. And so then give, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, so, so given, given, as you've said, we spent some time talking about how hard it is to play WFTDA games. What what does what does Mexico what do the teams that are WFTDA members get out of it? What was, what was the important reason for you joining? 
because and again not being not being harsh but it must have been predictable that it was going to be hard getting um, um, getting North Americans to come to play to come to Mexico to play when you joined so what was it it was it was it having influence was it being heard in WFTDA what was your what's the driving force what do you want out of WFTDA I think Maria was selling the issue of trying to be WFTDA year by year we are growing up we are learning we are skating better or trying to skate better and in Mexico we we have reached our I think our limit and we have to improve it so many of our players our of our skaters in Quimeras in Aniquiladoras in Minervas in Baja California in Mexico City want to improve and bring that uh, growth to Mexico because we want to the uh, roller derby growth so even uh, I think um, some skaters have the dream of the uh, champ in WFTDA we have uh, right now uh, one skater Mexican skater in Denver that is mm -hmm. uh, na her name is Dios Azteca and, and she's Portland amazing she was part of Mexico City two years ago three years ago something like that and she skate amazing she is a really great blocker but she has this dream and she go to United States I think she lives in, in Denver and she achieved this goal and there is right now another skate in uh, Rose City um, the this the uh, team, team. The reserve yeah. team is uh, Danny Darko, and there are many skaters that they are trying to reach this goal. But there is another dream to is take the Mexican roller derby as a team to that dream that is WFTDA, but it's not the name, it's not the, uh, I don't know, the logo. It's to grow up, to skate better, to Find experience, right? To share like with there and, and in general yeah. put Mexico on the map. Like here is yeah, Mexico. Exactly. I don't I don't care which team, but here is Mexico. Yeah. yeah. So if we see the uh, sorry, uh, if we see the big picture, even uh, here in Mexico, the derby it's growing up thanks to the all the people that we we want to grow up the roller derby, but if this generation of, of people that it's growing this um, this sport uh, get out of roller derby whatever they do their life whatever they do um, the, um, then what the derby start to die so I think uh, uh, something to improve is um, and WFTDA can help it's to to not let roller derby die in Mexico like that so we can uh, to have a plan or to have some improvements to make that happen to make an extra structure to 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 make a roller derby growing up even more and not dying here yes, in mexico because in the united states they have this structure that uh, allow them to form these kiddos that they yes. are uh, practicing uh, roller derby since, I don't know, 15 years, 18, eight years. So when they achieve uh, 18, 20 years, they are amazing skaters. Uh, I was thinking these two skaters on Baja last year. Oh my God. They, oh, they, crash more. Like yeah. Yeah. they skate beautiful. They skate awesome in compare of, like, I don't know, me. And they are oh, like six right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are juniors as skaters. <laughs> in Mexico, yeah. we don't have that structure. We don't have junior skate, junior roller derby, junior roller derby. We don't have that. So all of <laughs> all of the skaters are grown adults. <laughs> and we have, I think, four players on 18 and Discordia, you have this baby metal, I think, I, I remember. Or we have two, uh, two freshies and two babies, <laughs> but it, yes, yeah. we have two. And in, in other teams, we don't have junior roller derby and we need that to grow. Up. So and we, we need a structure, we need to teach other, to, so it's uh, yeah, complicated. So, but, so talking about that, so what do you think the reason that you don't have juniors is? Because, I mean, so juniors is a big thing to set up and certainly 
in Europe, it's taken a long time for us to set up junior teams. So what, what do you think is stopping junior teams happening in Mexico? First of all, and I, I'm going to answer this question, uh, is uh, Mexican culture of uh, sportivity, let's call it like that. So we don't have that culture in Mexico. Uh, you go to the U.S. and they teach you, uh, you have to go to the gym since you are in uh, high school or before that junior high and you have to be part of a competitive team you have to go to state champs whatever uh, sport you choose but it's part of your uh, curricular uh, regular academy stuff in mexico we have oh yeah we have these uh, professors that teach you uh, physics education but that's it that's the only thing and you don't have this structure for uh, young people to be competitive and you don't have the support even uh, from the government or for even your family to be a person of sports because they don't see uh, a goal in there. They don't see you will not have money. You will don't you won't have money for your life and those kind of stuff because there is no structure in Mexico. So if you start from there and then you ask that roller derby is not even in the map for sports, then you got nothing for juniors. They prefer to send their uh, uh, little kids to uh, summer camp for playing soccer or playing other team or other sport other than this. So that's, I think, the main issue that the sports is not even a thing for kids in Mexico. Add also, to, adding to that, Alex, I would add that even our sport, it's a very difficult sport and it is a new sport and nobody, I think it's no one knowing sport and um, just as Alex said, uh, the culture that Mexican have, that we have, even if you're a girl, your mom or your dad are not going to take you to hit with other girls. I mean, you're a girl, right? So it's a really evolving um, thinking. We as a adults or young people, I don't care. I want to do that. But it depends on us to start to teach to junior people to you can do it safely even when you are eight years ten years and we we can teach you how to do it in the correct way so earlier we didn't have these teachers but i think that this generation of teams that are us we can start to thinking about junior it's difficult because of the thinking mexican about sport culture and about these, uh, oh no, you're a girl, how is you're gonna hit with not another? And, but I think it's a very good time to start to doing or, or thinking about it. Adding that it's not that easier because here in Mexico City, it's kind of difficult to have a space for us. It's, and putting attention on us, on our skating, on our trainings, on our games, on our tournaments, it's going to be more difficult to start teaching to young people when you're uh, working on you. So I, th I think it needs more organization with, with, with no sacrifices like, okay, I will stop skating to teach young people. Well, I mean, if you want to do it, go to do it. But I think it's like, um, finishing process like I'm finished I'm going to teach now to the young people it depends of uh of it depends on us to to having junior people yeah and field. also yes but that, we eat. wait 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 <laughs> and also I think it's a, an economy issue because our sports it's not it's not cheap that's the first thing so me as a parent it's an example I don't have babies but me as a parent, I'd rather to pay, I don't know, like food, clothes, uh, the private school, other than make you uh, go to play and make you put you in the risk that you can break a bone, for example, because Mexico. So I think it's uh, a, um, a lot about that as well. The Mexican culture, like I'd rather to spend this money in other things than this sport. You wanna make, you wanna practice in a sport? Okay, go to the park with your friends from the block and play there. It's cheaper, easier, and I don't have to take you to a venue, for example. I think that it's also like that because um, we have been trying, my league, we have been trying to invite uh, little kids 
and the, the parents are like, yeah, but uh, how much uh, it costs? And you tell them how much cost the skates, and they are like, it's cheaper a uh, basketball a ball, for example. Um, and what are the risks? Ah, oh, well, there's actually there's not not a high risk if they learn how to hit, how to receive a hit, and they're like, mm, I don't know, it's pretty risky for for my kiddo. So it's really hard. The, I, I think uh, it's all about the the reset, but also the economy part and the cultural way that we are being raised. It's pretty. Oh, or something to... that the WFTD can can't uh, fix for us, but I uh, because it's a Mexican culture, like you say. But um, but I think that we can learn how to um, teach younger uh, generations of of roller derby because I think uh, either of us or or even or also me and. Uh, to we don't have the knowledge to 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 learn, to teach to a, a kid to 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 say uh, um, we are adults so we have we we decide to practice this 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 sport so we say okay I I have to go to train I have to do exercise at, at home I have to do this that uh, everything but if but what what we we can do to 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 teach kids, so uh, that's uh, that's an uh, information I don't have. I don't know. So it, I think if I maybe have a a guy uh, and someone to tell me, ah, oh, you can do this with uh, these kids because we have the experience to that we have a junior team, so we know how to teach kids because we already know, uh, we already do that. So the cultural part on Mexico, we, the WFTD can fix because it's not that problem, not, not, not hits the problem, sorry, but, um, but they can help us to, to, to let us, to let the to make us know how we can teach to the kids or to the younger uh, generation, I think. Yeah, and so I mean, we've talked about that being a WTDA problem, but I'm just thinking: are there there must be associations for other sports on roller skates in America, I mean, in Me in Mexico that you could? Um, we have we have there's a, La Federación Mexicana de Patinaje. It's Mexican Federation of the States, I don't know. But it's like an want, Olympic association. Uh, but they want us to be like, um, how can I say it without sound so communist? <laughs> I don't know. It is okay to sound communist, but this is... This is the <laughs> <laughs> they, they want us to be exactly the way you want us to be. Like, you're going to play against all the people that I want. You cannot practice any other sport. Um, they want to... Uh, control us, and they don't. And they, they have roller derby, but it's not WFDA. It's the other, the other one. I, I don't. Know. US uh, RDA. No. Sorry, or, it's, or bank track. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it's, they yeah. What is what is now called World Skate in quotes. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, the the federation. They are uh, the the roller derby team. They played with them, and it was like, no, we are WFDA. If you want to be part of my federation, you have to play whatever I say. Okay, thank you so much. You can go and at the the fuck off, like traffic. Like no, <laughs> we're not going to play that. We're WFTBA and we're going to stand by that. And they back in the day when I was uh, at the association, the Mexican association, I have an a, a, an argue with the uh, with the people because I said no. We are not going to play with, with your rules. We want to play WTA. And they say, okay, so I'm not going to support you in anything. Oh, sorry, when did you? I mean, like, we, what are we losing? Nothing, because you haven't supported us. Never. So thank you so much, but no thanks. And we just walk away. And we didn't want to play with them because they want us to be a uh, not WFDA, and that's not the way that we want to be. So 
if there's a federation, but no, no, thank you. We're not with them. And was this also a problem for the national teams? Because I know that um, other organizations that have been well, skate affiliated have tried creating their own national teams for teams as well. But um, so, was there ever any attempt like that, or is is Team Mexico always just been your Team Mexico? It's always have been our Team Mexico, and I hope they they will. We always try to get them a lot of the sponsors, and um, they are really like like because Mexico, we are used to not receiving help, so mm. the, the players are in the in the channel that they have to pay for everything by themselves. So they start saving money and they uh, we have to knock a lot of those. So uh, we try to get them the best and uh, as free as possible. It's not really possible, but uh, again, the community uh, buy all the shirts that we made. They buy a lot of um, all the merch that we made from the Team Mexico, the community buy because they know it's for the team Mexico. So it's, uh, again, it's uh, for us, by us, to us. It's just uh, the way it is. And I think it's uh, something, the, um, on one side, I think it's really sad that we don't get the support from our government. But on the other hand, I think it's really nice how the community, it's a community and we help each other. And um, I mean, um, on the track, you are my the, my enemy, let's call it some way. But out of it, of the trap, if you need something and I can give it to you, I will. And and I think it's something it's really awesome about our community. I don't know how it works in other countries, but in Mexico, we are um, we are the way we are. We support each other. I can talk shit on your back, but if I can help you some some way. And I got the chance, I will. That's the way it works. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think I think all well there have been all countries has some of that, but I think Mexico certainly has a very strong community ethos, as you said, for lots of reasons. So it's it has been a good and I think it was impressive to see Team Mexico certainly at the twenty eighteen World Cup. I think you played very well together and it was obvious that you were a cohesive team. And I hope, I think a lot of people bought your shirts as well, um, who weren't yeah. even from Mexico. So. They loved the logo. Just they the loved logo it. was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> who, who designed the logo? Was that another member of the team or was it a...? Uh, it's a player from uh, Liga Roder de Ciudad Mexico. Her name is, uh, well, it was the two logos. The girl's logo, it was made by this girl. It, it's called Sugar. I don't know her real name. <laughs> Irene. 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 No, Irene. Irene. Uh, Irene. It's uh, sugar from uh, tequileras. And the men's flower derby, it was a uh, uh, concurso. I mean the word. It's the concurso. They did a survey and it was... Uh, Okay. No. Contest, contest, contest. 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 It, it was voted, yeah. Uh -huh. It was a contest. I, I, I'm not sure who was the, the, the owner there, and the, the winner. The logo, the logo from the men's roller derby. But uh, yeah, it I wasn't the, the Sugar's boyfriend? I think it was Sugar's boyfriend. A yeah. logo, so, logo or I guess? Like I'm that. not yeah. sure. I think. It was yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was him. So if the logo, it was uh, the both both logos were from uh, Schubert's marriage. Mm. <laughs> the, the two of them. But it was a contest. Yeah. And obviously, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is, uh, as well as the logo, it's been good to see. As I said, I think Team Mexico did, did very well uh, in the last men's World Cup and the other Team Mexico did actually did, did pretty well in, in 2018's uh, RDWC as well, so uh, I know it's very it was very expensive for you to get to um, the UK, but um, yeah, it was, and actually a lot of people uh, had to quit their jobs to go there, so they can have money and they can have actually time to be in Europe. But yeah, it was a hell of expensive for them. 
Yeah, I, I was thinking when uh, many minutes ago, I know that the economic situation, the description of this, I have to work, I have to pay my, my skates, I have, is pretty similar in, in all, pers in, for every person to practice roller derby. But in Latin America, <laughs> we have uh, this really big difference uh, of incomes that uh, make many difficult for every skater in Latin America to want to play in competitive level. So uh, to go to the, uh, these champions, uh, these national, uh, international champions, is, I, I forgot the name. Um, tournament. Tournament. It, it implies to Mexican skaters to quit their, their jobs uh, and after the go to play and come back to Mexico to this unemployment, unemployment situation. Uh, many of the skaters to participate in this uh, tournament uh, have to drive an, an over uh, waiting for another formal employee. So I think the, we have this uh, different income situation in Latin America that is uh, forgotten for this uh, equip uh, teams in the United States, these uh, WFTDA uh, bureaus and uh, the planning of uh, international yeah. tournaments because we don't have uh, government support, we don't have uh, sponsorships in, in Mexico. I only know three people that uh, have some kind of a spon uh, sponsorship. Um, I think it's a mouse that in, at some point they receive uh, elite escape sponsorship yeah, yeah. and it's storm. Storm. storm and pony i don't from black black yeah okay three okay. three skates yeah. three skaters three skaters so yeah it's, so it's actually going to that point and that's for the best idea to consider is that everything is wage in dollars us dollars and right now the exchange rate from Latin American countries against the US dollar is just terrific. I mean, it's terrible, sorry, it's just terrible. And if you compare the Euro against the US dollar, it's almost the same for you. So if you go to the US or US going to Europe, it's just like uh, driving to the next city because the, the prices are the same. But for uh, Latin America and for Mexico, it's just, uh, I mean, it's just a big hit to your wallet when you make a trip, whether it's to the US or to Europe. So that WFTA, the, they don't have that in, in consideration. They think everybody uh, has the same exchange rate and dollars works for everybody. And if I pay $300 for a, a pair of skates, then everybody has to pay $300, even though that's 20 more times what I should pay than the Europe or US person has to pay. So I think that's a really good thing to consider for them. Yeah, and I mean, um, you say that, but also certainly every time WFTA or MRDA has had tournaments in, they had non-European tournaments in Europe, where they've had a championship or something in Europe. Uh, there have been American leagues who have complained because they have they have higher travel costs. So, um, yeah. So you know, it, it 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 does. It's it's a weird perception, right? I mean, I think if they if they knew what, you know, it costs even for European leagues to travel to America, let alone what it costs. For you to compete with people, but it would be a different matter. But yeah, there's, an, there's a weird asymmetry in people's, people's idea of what expensive is, I think. Um, but uh, yes, uh, I've had you guys for, I think, like two hours now um, <laughs> in this conversation. Uh, so uh, I think we should start letting you, we should start wrapping up. So I guess. Um, I'd like to finish by asking everyone if there's one thing you could change to make about Mexico, or either one thing you could change or one thing you want people to know about Mexican Derby that they don't already know, uh, what would it be? And you can answer it when you think of something. It doesn't have to be a long thing, but just you know, a thing. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I mean, that they are a uh, strong uh, community like uh, they, they say so that we are a strong community and even if we don't get the support uh, we are we have a lot to roller derby so 
we don't give up. So we are Mexican, and so we don't give up. Yeah, I think we are learning, we are uh, growing up, and we want to share with uh, other teams, with other countries. So you are welcome to come to our country and skate and <laughs> I have bouts in here. Uh, maybe <laughs> we can, uh, we can uh, improve our uh, venues, but we are welcome to come to our country. <laughs> Yeah, I will add actually that, that we are uh, very, we were very pleased to receive any team from any place. It is a very good level of derby here in Mexico. So it would be great to receive and to, to know each other and just to take a good impression of our country. Everybody who comes, lives with a really, really good expectations, a good experience, and a very good friends that, that open doors too. So welcome, everybody wants to, to come to play. Um, I think that realizing the importance of improve, share and learn from each other uh, is going to make a, a stronger community because there are a lot of new teams that are growing up and they are just one year and they are just like five players, but they want to learn and share with other teams. So I think you make a, a stronger community. It was a hard one. I mean, well, what can I change? Well, I have two, one okay. for the boys and one for the girls. For the boys, come on, bring it down, babies, because our boys are amazing. And I, I want them to see that um, there's a good level of men's roller derby in Mexico. They're, there is, and they're really competitive, and sometimes they're really uh, real rascals, <laughs> but, but they, are, they are really good people. And, and they want to want to uh, practice and, and to see other teams and and play against other teams other than the same five teams that we have in Mexico. But uh, the teams in the USA, as we say the, the couple hours ago, they don't want to play here. So they, this is an invitation to the rest of the lower every teams out there to come here. It's a, uh, if you are in Europe, it's gonna be really cheap, it's free. And if you are in South America, we can help you out because we are Mexicans. And that's the way that we do. We don't have too much, but the, the things that we have, we share because we can help people, I don't know. And for the girls, um, actually it's the same. It's, uh, we have a lot of good roller derby. I, I know we can be better, but it's a process. It's not like we're going to be the best or that our tournament is going to be as hard and fast and, and exciting. No, no, it's exciting. But as, as hard as WFTA mm, championships. But at our level, it's amazing. And you, you will not find the thrill and the excitement and, and the Mexicanness. I don't know how to say it. Dreams. Yeah, it's amazing. Our tournament, the championships, is the, it's the most important tournament of the year, but not only because of the games that, that we play, it's because of the environment that there is and, and the food and you can, uh, the refs get the, 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 to eat everything that we have and we treat them like uh, um, our guests. So we treat them really nice and we, we will do it with any team from other countries that would like to come down here. So it's an invitation because we are really cool and we are really, um, I don't know, like, like heart, um, heartwarming and Thank we you. have a lot of tequila. Yes. <laughs> mezcal, I prefer mezcal. mezcal yeah, mezcal, yes, please. Sorry. <laughs> so that's it yeah so uh, what I want 
the world know about Mexico is that they don't have to ask us. Uh, you can ask uh, the big figures in roller derby. So you can ask Bonnie Thunders, you can ask OMG, you can ask Sailor Little Helper, you can ask Smarty Pants from the skater side. They all have come to Mexico, just ask them what they think about the level, about the people, about the country. And obviously, as Dana mentioned, it's really cheap. You will not have an impact in your pocket, trust me. Um, for the other side, uh, we have a ton of refs that have come down here. So big time refs. Uh, for skaters, officials that are watching this, you know those names, Cirrhosis, Danger Muffin, Ninja Sassem, they all have come down here and they love the level, they love everything about Mexico, so if you are questioning yourself if you should go to Mexico, just ask them, don't ask us, because we are going to sell you everything, right? So just ask them and see what they think, and there you have it. That's what you need to know. I think, and I think everyone should definitely consider visiting Mexico uh, for either a game or just to. I mean, I assume people are welcome to turn up if they people want to turn up and see a, and join a team for a practice or something. It's also yeah, sure. Just turn up, knock at the door, and we will open you practice uh, houses. So and we're also, here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. And so you can write to any team, any team. Just type roller derby Mexico, and the first one that pops, it's going to say yes. Oh, any league, okay. any oh, team, okay. any member, yeah. just, yeah. So on that note, um, thank you all for coming uh, to this. Uh, I think we may have another Mexico episode at some point, uh, because obviously there are teams that are not uh, in the center and south of Mexico that we also would like to cover. But uh, for now, um, I'll let everyone wave goodbye from our first of our Mexico broadcasts. So thank you all for coming. Um, this has been Mexico. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you everybody for listening.